Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. ESCOM released interim results this week and confirmed that it was likely to repeat its record 20 billion rand loss of 2019 in 2020. Terence Creamer joins me to discuss the outlook for the troubled company. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What do these results tell us about the state of the company? I think it tells us that ESCOM remains in a very fragile position financially and we know operationally we had some load shedding recently. During this period, under review, which was the six months to September, we didn't have load shedding. But, uh, and this is the sort of p part of the year where all the tailwinds are behind Eskom. So it gets its tariff increase from the 1st of April. It has uh, all its plant in operation during the winter months. It has a higher winter tariff. So generally, this is the good part of the year for Eskom. And it did make uh, a, a bit of a higher profit, net profit of over a billion rand. But obviously it's warning that the second half will be, that will be obliterated because of a number of factors, but they go into summer maintenance, their costs go up, um, there's lower demand, there's a lower summer tariff. So all those will combine to, and most importantly, they're gonna be paying off a lot of debt during the second half of the year. So there's going to be a, a, a real deterioration and they're likely to end the year with that 20 billion rand loss again. ESCOM is saying that a number of things need to come together to improve its sustainability. Yes, I, I think there's now a, a wide acknowledgement that ESCOM is not sustainable. The reason why it's still a going concern is because you and I as taxpayers have uh, put in a massive bailout for the next three years. That's created some going concern breathing space, um, you know, over 40 billion this year, over 50 billion next year, over 30 billion the following year of fiscal transfers go into Eskom to keep it into some sort of uh, shape where it can con continue to trade. And, but uh, the, the debt is now at uh, 454 billion rand. And uh, the interest on its debt this year is now 38 billion. So that exceeds what it pays for staff. It's only short of what it pays for coal. It's, so it's the second biggest line item on its costs. So it's really not a sustainable uh, position. So there are a number of elements that Eskom's talking about. Obviously within its control, it needs to collect the money it bills. So there's this 40 billion problem where municipalities in Soweto aren't paying. It needs to make some progress there. It has set a target of uh, reducing its costs permanently, taking 33 billion rand a year out of its costs by 2023. Now th that there are a number of e efforts underway uh, to do that. But what they made clear yesterday is that's going to not include any form of job shedding or retrenchments other than natural attrition. So they have to find those cost savings in the procurement chain around coal, etc. So really then there's the two other elements that, uh, they, that aren't really directly in its control but have to also be dealt with in order to get it onto a sustainable footing. And the one is this debt overhang, this 454 billion and growing. Uh, and it is saying it does need debt relief. Um, and uh, government has acknowledged that as well in the medium term budget policy statement, but kept its powder dry. So I suspect that even though it's got its bre this breathing room from the fiscal transfers, it's going to, there's going to need to be an announcement on the debt relief. And uh, I think probably the February budget, there'll be a lot of attention paid as to whether that is when uh, Minister Mbawini is ready to pull the trigger on that debt relief and in what form it's going to take and how all bondholders are going to be treated. And there's a committed commitment to treat all uh, debt holders equally. So that, that debt relief package uh, is something that's being worked on at the moment and uh, is, go is going to need to be finalized to give uh, a certainty around the, the financial sustainability of ESCOM. And then there's the issue of tariffs. And uh, you know that for many years, every time we have a NERSA hearing, we hear this uh, mantra that uh, tariffs in South Africa are not at cost reflective levels. And they've already surged over the last 10 years massively. And we've seen the effect of that in that some companies, especially heavy in uh, in electricity intensive businesses, have uh, come under huge strain. And there is this re uh, reducing demand as a result. So there's, a, it's a, there's, a, um, there's an element of elasticity of demand. So th I suppose the big test case will be January. 
when uh, the court sits to hear an urgent application by Eskom over the way NURSA treated uh, the 23 billion rand that was announced in the budget last year uh, in, in the uh, tariff determination. There's a big dispute about that and whether it gets that immediate relief. If it does, it may come f in the form of a higher tariff from April 1, but it's likely to be appealed, so we may, it may take some time. And the Eskim's also reviewing uh, several other, not only uh, tariff determinations, but also regulatory clear clearing account applications. So these are in front of the court, but I think those processes are going to so take some time. But it's all those components, the cost saving, uh, the, uh, the debt relief, the, the collecting what you bill in terms of Soweto and municipalities and the tariff trajectory, that all those have to come together to put uh, Eskom back into a position where it's not making these massive, one, these massive losses, but one, uh, secondly, that it's back on a sustainable financial trajectory. What are the likely priorities for Andre de Reiter when he takes up the position on January 15? Well, I suppose the, one of the uh, areas which is positive for him is that he doesn't have to deal with retrenchments from day one. So uh, that's been taken off the table. That's what uh, the chairman, uh, Jabba Mabuza, said yesterday. Retrenchments are off the table. So he doesn't have to really deal with that as a burning platform issue. So I suppose the big issue then will be to focus on the debt relief package. And uh, hopefully, you know, he comes in on ja January the 15th. Uh, by mid-February, you have the budget. Hope in his mind, hopefully that will be something that he can get out of the way, have a roadmap for the debt relief in place so that uh, that is not an overhang. A bit like there was the urgent issue of the fiscal, fiscal transfers this year, which they did get. So I imagine that will be a key priority and then um, not having to at the same time have a rumble with the staff, uh, I think will be useful for him. But then the operational, then it has to be the uh, turning to the operational and structural uh, factors. Operationally, Eskim's still very fragile. We know that load shedding is just uh, a sort of a couple of breakdowns away every day. And uh, from January 15, when he st uh, starts office, you know, that's when things will be ramping up back in the economy after the summer holidays. So it will be tight. So his first few months could be about trying to push back against load shedding or explaining why uh, we need to load shed. And, uh, so that, and then there will be the big, big issue of restructuring the organization, um, uh, unbundling it, uh, separating the generation, transmission and distribution businesses, and finding a sort of sustainable platform for the business where transmission is obviously going to be a much more important uh, component. We've always focused on generation, but because Eskom is broke and is, cannot really add new capacity, the new capacity is really going to come in the form of independent power producers and embedded generation. Embedded generation is really a municipal issue, but for Eskom, they need to connect these big utility scale RPPs. They need to be in a position to strengthen the grid and resources need to be set aside, not only uh, human resources and human capital, but real capital needs to be set aside so that we can connect the more the solar and the wind plants that are going to be coming in over the next, uh, over the next five year horizon but over the next 10 years. So a lot of attention has to be given from day one to that unbundling issue, but also making sure that that transmission business is ready to go and hit the ground running when we need to start connecting the new capacity, which is not going to be Eskom capacity other than the remaining units on the Dupi and Kusile. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily Email Newsletter.